this talk at one o'clock is from Zialong from Alibaba and Spark. Let's give them a big DEF CON help. Welcome. Come on. <laughs> Louder. I don't hear you. <laughs> Louder. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Xiaolong Bai from Alibaba. Uh, this is Min Spark Zheng, and um, uh, he's my colleague. And uh, today we are going to talk about uh, iOS security. Uh, the title of our talk is uh, Hack Pack, Hacking Point of Authentication in iOS User Space. Uh, before starting our talk, I'd like to have a self, self introduction. Um, uh, I'm from Alibaba, and uh, before joining Alibaba, I have got my uh, PhD degree in uh, Tsinghua University. And uh, I have published several papers on uh, Black Hat USA, Black Hat Europe, and uh, the Big Four. Uh, my Twitter account name is BX1989. Uh, so welcome to uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, my colleague Spark Zheng is, uh, is a PhD from uh, COHK, and uh, he is now a senior secretary expert in Alibaba. Uh, his Twitter account name is Spark Zheng. Uh, this talk will be separated into several parts. Uh, firstly, I will have a brief, e uh, brief introduction uh, of what uh, the point of authentication is. Uh, and then I will show how point of authentication is protecting iOS. Uh, and then uh, comes to the uh, main part of this talk. That is, we found a design flaw in the user space point of authentication. And uh, with this uh, design flaw, I will show you how to do uh, Exploitation in the uh, user space of iOS in this PSC era, uh, and and at last I will show you a, a tool we designed to uh, do user space exploitations, uh, which is called PSC gadget. So, what is point authentication? Uh, point authentication is a, an extended feature of ARM. Uh, it is available in uh, A12, uh, which is the core of iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max. Uh, it protects pointers with cryptographic signatures. Uh, how does it work? Uh, it works by introduction of two uh, instruction sets, which are called uh, PC instruction, uh, PC instructions and uh, AOT instructions. Um, PC instructions calculate uh, PC instructions calculate a key hash of the pointer, uh, which is named the PAC, and uh, inserts the PAC into the pointer. And the AOT instructions ex extract the PAC from the send pointer and authenticate whether the PAC is consistent with the original pointer. Uh, you can see from the figure that when a PAC instruction is uh, executed on a, a pointer value, the a PC value will be uh, inserted into the pointer, uh, like the red one. Uh, in PC and the AOT instructions, there are two main factors. Uh, they are called keys and context. Uh, uh, the PC instructions work uh, work as follows. Uh, it, it it will use a key register and a context register to sign. Uh, to calculate uh, a PS value from the register XD, and uh, then it will uh, insert the PS value into the register XD, uh, which then forms a, a sign pointer. And for AOT instructions, uh, these instructions uh, extract the PS value from the uh, XD register, and then it also uses the key register and the context register to verify whether the PC value is consistent with the original uh, pointer value. Uh, if the verification succeeds, uh, it will use the uh, verified pointer value to do jump or load. Uh, if the verification uh, fails, uh, it will insert an error code into the uh, uh, into the into the into pointer, uh, so the pointer cannot be used for further use. Uh, there are five key registers in, uh, in, in, in the CPU. They are called AI key, BI key, AD key, BD key, and G key. Uh, here the I keys means 
uh, is used for instruction pointers, uh, sign and verification. And the D keys are used for data pointers. Uh, these key registers are only readable and writable on exception levels larger than uh, ER1. Uh, uh, different from the key registers, contact registers are only uh, general registers. Uh, they are used to, to prevent uh, intro process pointer uh, substitution attacks. Uh, that is uh, when we send the same pointer value with th the same key but a different context value, uh, we will result in different PC values. Uh, as a result, uh, uh, for example, a uh, pointer uh, signed with context A uh, would fill verification with context B uh, even in the same process. Uh, but you should re you should remember that there are some instructions just uh, using uh, now pointer uh, now 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 context. Uh, I mean the the context is all zero. Mm, these are the list of uh, uh, supported uh, PAC and uh, AOT instructions in the ARM. Um, So we know uh, what the point set, uh, we, we have a brief understanding of the point authentication. So how point authentication is protecting LS? Uh, let's answer this question. Uh, point authentication uh, reduced the threat of memory corruption by preventing code reuse attacks. Uh, what is memory corruption vulnerabilities? Uh, it is one of the most frequently exploited vulnerabilities in LS user space services and the kernel. Uh, typical memory corruption vulnerabilities include uh, user free and buffer overflow. And when uh, we have uh, memory corruption vulnerabilities, we always use the code reuse attacks to uh, exploit these vulnerabilities. Uh, code reuse uh, attacks uh, always utilize the gadgets that are already uh, present in the program or in uh, shared libraries. Uh, to do malicious things. Uh, typical code reuse attacks include uh, a return oriented program which is also called ROP and a jump oriented program which is called uh, JOP. Uh, the difference between uh, ROP and JOP is that ROP in, in ROP gadgets always end with uh, write instructions and uh, for JOP gadgets uh, are often uh, ended with the uh, BRR and BR, BR, they are jump instructions. Uh, a sample buffer, buffer overflow is like, uh, like this. Uh, uh, from this code, uh, we can see that in the overflow function, uh, there is a, a mem copy uh, function called. Um, the, but the mem copy function uh, does not, uh, before the mem copy function called, uh, this function does not check uh, whether the uh, buffer size is uh, lower than is lower than uh, zero uh, zero x uh, four thousand. Uh, when we encounter this vulnerability, how do we uh, exploit them? Uh, uh, we we exploit it, uh, it like follows. Uh, we can write more buffer uh, more data into the buffer uh, array. And uh, uh, the uh, the more we uh, the mm, the data we we write will override the uh, the area in victim array. Uh, that is, we we may uh, override the uh, uh, function pointer in the victim array, uh, which is called a dummy. And uh, then uh, by uh, by giving dummy a, a, a arbitrary uh, address we can force the uh, victim process to jump to uh, other uh, locations and uh, from those locations we can use RP chain, RP gadgets or JOP gadgets to do malicious things. And uh, here the point authentication uh, is going to prevent uh, uh, RP and JOP uh, but how? Uh, it prevents RP and JOP by replacing Dangerous instructions in the uh, in the gadgets we, we see. Um, for RP, uh, 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 RP for for RP, uh, point authentication 
replaces the right addresses with uh, right instructions with the, uh, right AB instruction. Uh, right AB instruction ensures that the return addresses uh, was correctly signed. So the signed return ad uh, addresses will be protected by the key and the context. And for JOP, uh, BRR and BR is now replaced by uh, BRRA and BRA. Uh, these instructions ensure that the function pointers uh, we are going to use to jump was correctly signed. Uh, so the, now the signed pointer function pointers is uh, protected by the key and the context. Uh, so now the instruction uh, w by replacing uh, this uh, write and uh, BRR BR, uh, instructions, uh, we can prevent ROP and GOP. Uh, even if the PSA, uh, e e even if in um, uh, victim processes the uh, PCH hijacked, there is no way to launch further attacks uh, because the attacker cannot fake the uh, sign pointers that can be correctly verifi verified. Uh, Apple has, uh, iOS has already uh, deployed the P um, portal authentication protection in user space daemons and the, in the kernel. Uh, so, so with the portal authentication, uh, since both the key and the context are unknown to the attacker, it can successfully uh, prevent RP and GOP attacks. Sorry. Uh, so for now, uh, when we talk about iOS attacks and jailbreaks, uh, we, we, we know that the iOS uh, attacks and jailbreaks has come into the uh, PSA era. Uh, in previous jail, jailbreaks, ROP and JOP was the first step to ex exploit uh, user space demons and the kernel. But now, uh, RP and GOP attacks are prevented by um, pointer authentications. Uh, instruction pointers are now sent everywhere. Uh, so, uh, what can we do now? Uh, this talk will only focus on uh, pointer authentication in the in the user space. Uh, in the uh, this means uh, uh, when we talk about a user space attack scenario, we mean that the attacker is a local application on the same device with the, uh, with the target system service demons. And for uh, security an analysis on kernel point authentication, please refer to uh, Brandon's blog. Uh, so we, we know that the point authentication should be very strong, but uh, um, for now, we have found some weak points in the point authentication in user space. Uh, the foundation of a successful point authentication protection uh, should be that uh, the attacker cannot fake send pointers uh, that can be correctly verified by the target process. Uh, this is based on two, uh, two uh, basic knowledge is that uh, we should, uh, we know that the sign key is unique for different uh, processes. And the context is also very private in different process. So uh, without knowing the sign key and the context, the attacker cannot create uh, uh, correctly signed pointers. But if the sign key and the context are identical in two different processes, an um, inter-process uh, point of substitution attack uh, would be possible and the uh, point of authentication protection will fail. So here comes the question, is iOS correctly protecting sign key and the context? Uh, what if it, it fails to successfully protect us? So let's do some experiments. Uh, with our experiments is set up as follows. Uh, we developed two programs called Program A and uh, Program B. Uh, they are developed by different de developer accounts. Uh, and uh, we send a pointer in pro pro Progress A and uh, verify it in Progress B with all the five key, uh, four keys, with all the keys and the, and the two contacts. Uh, the two contacts are zero contacts or uh, 
zero x one two three four. So, uh, what is this experiment for? We want to check whether the pointers stand in program A can be correctly verified in program B. If it can be correctly verified, uh, it should uh, indicate that the program A and the prog program B are using the same key. So if if this is true, uh, there is a problem. Uh, let's see. So the experiment result results show that uh, uh, the pointers signed by A I key and uh, A D key uh, are in, in program A can be correctly verified in program B. So that's very uh, surprising. Uh, it seems that iOS is using the same keys in different user space processes. But it is more important to know whether the, res the result is, is also true uh, for user space system demons. Uh, we did the experiments on our on developed uh, programs, but uh, we should know whether it is true for uh, system demons. Uh, we can answer this question by checking uh, whether a send pointer in a service can be correct uh, can be correctly verified in our own program. Uh, so, how to retrieve a send pointer from a user space daemon or system service? Uh, here, we use a denial of service vulnerability. Uh, on a system service to retrieve a sign pointer. Uh, the, the, the basics here is that uh, when a process uh, encounters a uh, uh, denial of service vulnerability, it, uh, it would crash. And when it crashes, uh, its register values are included in the crash log, uh, which may contain some sign pointers. We retrieve those sign pointers from the crash log. Uh, we found a null pointer dereference uh, vulnerability in the service uh, in the service log D, and uh, which is in iOS uh, twelve point one. This null pointer dereference vulnerability will cause the log D service to crash, uh, and uh, we know log D service is unsound boxed and uh, run running as a root. Uh, so where is this vulnerability? Uh, LogD provides a IPC service which is called com.apple.logd. Uh, the IPC service is implemented in the uh, in, in the source code Firehose uh, underscore uh, server dot c. And uh, in the uh, source code, we can find that. Uh, uh, Firehose server handle Mac event is the IPC handler. And uh, uh, from this handler, uh, it calls Firehose server demux. And the demux dispatch the IPC request uh, to different methods, including Firehose server register, Firehose server push async, and Firehose server push and wait. And uh, during this process, it uh, creates a, a global variable called uh, current client info. Um, but uh, it passes this uh, global variable to different uh, methods uh, without checking whether the uh, global variable is now. So in, in, in those dispatched methods, it just uh, trusted the uh, 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 the current uh, client info variable uh, without checking whether it is now. Uh, when it uses it, it will cause the uh, null point dereference uh, and uh, crashes the log D daemon. Uh, by triggering these vulnerabilities, we can get a, a crash log like follows. In a crash log, we can, we can see that the X16 register seems like a, a signed pointer. And uh, uh, by reverse engineering log D, we can find that uh, an, uh, an instruction has just uh, been executed before the crash. Uh, the, the instruction is like this, BRAA X uh, 16, uh, X 17. This instruction 
uh, verifies X16 with AI key as the key and the X16 as the context. Uh, from the crash lock, we know that uh, we know the value of X16 and X17. And uh, we get these uh, register values and uh, use these, these register values to uh, verify them, them in our own process. We try to verify X16 by AUTIA instruction in our own process. Uh, uh, in this way, we are using the uh, our own AI key as, a, as the key and the, uh, the previous X17 value as the context to verify X16. And the re result shows that the verification succeeds. So uh, this, re this experiment is, has the same result as the previous experiment. That means LS is really using the same A key in our own process as the, under the system services. Uh, this is a flaw. Uh, but it, it should not be exploitable uh, as I have said that the context uh, register is introduced to uh, prevent uh, pointer substitution attacks. And the attacker should not do, know the context in another process, for example, the X17. Uh, but did you forget that uh, I mentioned uh, there are some instructions that just use the zero context or no context. Uh, these instructions include the BRAAZ and the BRAAZ. Uh, when you use the no context or zero context, uh, the context is not, do, uh, is, is not doing anything to help you to protect the sign pointers. So what does that mean, that mean to an attacker? Uh, that means that a local attacker can create a sign pointers in his own process. And when the pointers are used in another system service process, uh, they will pass the verification of BRAAZ and BRAAZ in the system service. So uh, the GOP is alive now. Uh, that means we can use, uh, we can we, we, we can still use the uh, gadgets that are ended with BRA, 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 uh, BRAAZ or BRAAZ to uh, to find the GOP gadgets and the chain uh, GOP gadgets to do malicious things. Uh, but how about ROP? Uh, we know that our ROP uh, gadgets are now ended with. Uh, should now be ended with our uh, right A B, uh, but in this uh, in these instructions, uh, return addresses are now signed uh, by uh, by the B key and uh, and uh, which which uh, B, but the B key is unique in different processes, uh, and uh, we also know that the uh, 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 right A B uh, the context of right A B is S P. And also uh, private in different processes, so RP uh, has no chance. Uh, so we know that there is a, a key, man key management problem in iOS user space, uh, which is uh, this: uh, we know a key is a per device key; uh, it is renewed at uh, each device reboot. And uh, all processes are using the same A key. And the B key is a per process key. It is renewed when a process res uh, restarts, and the different processes are using the different uh, B keys. Uh, what is the root cause of this key management problem? Uh, the root cause is, is a trade off between the performance and the security. Uh, let's consider the situation that the function pointers, there are function pointers in shared libraries. Uh, you know, we, we know that the shared lab memory regions of shared lab libraries are copy on write. Uh, so if the pointers are signed by different keys in different processes, it will cost more time and uh, more memory space to create a new, new process uh, in order to copy the shared libraries. Uh, like this figure shows, uh, if we sign the pointers with the same key in different processes, 
uh, when we fork or create a new process, the shared lab the share shared libraries uh, do not need to uh, be uh, copied uh, at the fork. But if we sign pointers with different key in different processes, uh, we have to uh, create a new copy of the shared libraries when we fork uh, a process. So uh, the actual copy will cost um, more time and uh, more memory space. That's um, uh, a lot of performance loss. So Apple uh, has no choice but to use the same key between different processes. Th this is a design issue uh, which is in in inevitable. Mm, with this issue, uh, mm, let me uh, let's have a look at uh, how to do uh, exploitations in the uh, user space right now. Uh, uh, here, I will use a uh, real uh, iOS user space vulnerability to show how to do uh, exploitations in iOS user space uh, demons. Uh, this is uh, a vulnerability in the uh, daemon called Media Library D. Uh, Media Library D provides a uh, NSXPC service which allows sandbox applications to execute a SQL command on a SQLite database. Uh, the XPC uh, function is called execute uh, query uh, in the left figure. Uh, in the right, uh, you, you can write. Uh, okay, you, you you can write the code like 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 right to uh, execute some uh, secure commands on a uh, on a sec on a secure database. Uh, Securelite has a very interesting feature, uh, which is that the users can create a customized token uh, token tokenizer implementation and specify the tokenizer to be used. Uh, when indexing uh, text. So how to create a customized tokenizer implementation? Uh, we can provide a, a address in the SQL command and the SQLite will retrieve a function pointer from the address. And the function pointer uh, is exactly the tokenizer implementation. Mm, uh, you can see from the uh, figure that uh, we uh, create a, a tokenizer called my tokenizer uh, which uh, which is in the address 4141441. And uh, we use the my tokenizer to uh, create a table. And uh, when these secure uh, 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 commands are executed, um, the SQLite will uh, try to uh, find a function pointer which is indicated in the 414141 uh, address. Uh, and uh, use that function pointers to uh, call function. So, so when those uh, security commands are executed, media library D will try to uh, invoke a, a customized tokenizer uh, from a function pointer uh, like follows. Uh, this is the <coughs> the <coughs> the disassembled. Uh, instructions. It will try to load a uh, uh, function pointer from uh, x24 uh, plus 8. And uh, the x, uh, the, the function pointer should be a uh, signed function pointer and stored in x8. And the media library D will call the signed function pointer uh, by BRIAAZ. Uh, which is stored in X8. So uh, here, the attacker can control the X24. Uh, As a result, the attacker can control X8 and uh, further hijack the PC in media library D. Uh, how to further exploit this vulnerability? Uh, we, we know that uh, now uh, X8 is under our control. Uh, then we can use keep spray uh, techniques to uh, to to point the X8 to uh, uh, to to point to the X8 to a, 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 a arbitrary address 
uh, how to uh, sorry here we know that uh, x8 is a sign pointer and uh, we created the sign pointer in our all process and uh, put the sign pointer in the heap spray payload and then when we hijack the pieces through the x8, the x8 will will go through the uh, sign pointers we uh, set in the heap spray payload and then from the sign pointers we can do GOP. Uh, we, we, we can use many GOP gadgets to do malicious things. Uh, as an as an example, I will show you uh, how to print a message in the media library this uh, service. Uh, we use a GOP gadget to call NS log. Uh, uh, the first thing we need to do is to find a GOP gadget to, uh, to call the NS log. Uh, we found a, 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 a gadget in the SQLite uh, doll uh, develop. Uh, this gadget sets uh, uh, x x0 and uh, also a retrieval function pointer uh, from the x24. Uh, so we can now control x24, x8, x0 and uh, we can call, uh, then we can call an uh, s log from the x8 and uh, we set the x0 uh, to be an uh, s string structure. Uh, so now we can print a log uh, in the media library D. Uh, that is a, a more specific, uh, detailed uh, uh, graph of uh, what, what I have talked. Uh, we uh, first uh, control the uh, x8 to point to uh, the purple one. And uh, the purple one will lead to uh, the uh, right gadget. And uh, the gadget will uh, uh, further retrieve the function pointer uh, in the green one and uh, uh, also x x0 uh, from the uh, orange one and then the green one will lead us to the s log. So we can successfully may make a, a, a GOP exploit in the media library D and uh, from the uh, log we can see that the media library, uh, libra media library D is is now controlled by us and uh, print a uh, uh, message like this hello you are ex exploited. <coughs> uh, next uh, I will show that uh, in order to do uh, GOP uh, attacks in the PS error uh, we have developed uh, a new tool which is called PS gadget. Uh, why we uh, uh, want to build this tool? Uh, we build this tool because that manually looking for GOP gadgets is very tedious. Uh, so, so this tool, uh, so this tool will be used to, will be used to automatically find the uh, GOP gadgets in uh, binaries protected by point authentication. And uh, we develop a PSA gadget as a Idea Pro plugin. Uh, the basic workflow of PSA gadget is is like follows. Uh, we first find the BRIA, BRIA, BRIA and the BRIA instructions in the uh, in the binaries, and uh, then we get uh, and rec uh, record a new instruction in the backwards order, and we check whether the instruction will affect the control. Uh, if it is true, uh, we go to the final. Uh, if, if it's not true, we go to the uh, second and uh, we, we, we get a new instruction in the backwards order. order. Uh, so in this way, we can get a, a few code sequence uh, which, uh, you know, which is ended with those uh, BRIA or instructions. And uh, this instruction, uh, this, this code sequence can be used uh, in our GOP gadget. And also PSC uh, uh, gadget will further examine uh, each instruction in the gadget, uh, in, in the code sequence we have found. Uh, it will check 
uh, whether the branch target, uh, where the branch target is from, and uh, what it registers uh, can be influenced uh, in this, this code sequence. Uh, it will also generate a, a short description of what registers have been, uh, you, you, you can control uh, in this code sequence. Uh, there is a special kind of uh, GOP gadget which is called dispatcher gadget. Uh, dispatcher gadget uh, re repeatedly uh, invoke other gadgets or call functions in a while loop. Uh, the feature of this patch gadget is that the loop body will load a function pointer from the address, which is indicated by a, a base register plus an offset. Uh, uh, this offset is updated uh, by a loop counter. Uh, with the help of a PAC gadget, we automatically uh, find uh, such a, a dispatcher gadget uh, in libc++. Uh, you, uh, uh, you can see from the fi this, this figure that uh, uh, in this gadget, uh, the gadget will uh, retrieve the uh, function pointer from uh, x19. And uh, the, func uh, the, the function pointer will be further used to call other gadgets, and uh, we, we can loop uh, through the through the gadget. So now with the uh, dispatcher gadget, we can uh, do arbitrary code execution in user space system demons. Uh, so next, uh, I will conclude uh, um, this talk. Uh, in this talk, uh, uh, we can have a basic understanding of what uh, point authentication is, and uh, how point authentication works, uh, and how it is protecting iOS user space demons. Uh, more importantly, I have shown that there is a design flaw in iOS user space point authentication. That is, iOS using the same key in different user space processes. And uh, I show that uh, attacker can leverage this flaw to launch GOP uh, attacks in user space demons. And uh, I use uh, a real exploit to de demonstrate the GOP attacks in point authentication protected uh, processes. And finally, I have shown a tool to automatically find GOP gadgets in uh, point authentication protected binaries. And here are some uh, references. Um, Brandon, I said, uh, uh, Brandon has already uh, uh, do some uh, research on the uh, point authentication issues in the kernel. And uh, Ian Beer has also uh, do some experiments uh, of point authentication in the user space. Uh, okay. And uh, um, Proteus and uh, XRub has developed uh, several tools to help you understanding what point authentication is and how, how you can inspect uh, point authentication instructions in binaries. So that's all, thank you. Uh, if you are interested in my talk, uh, we can have a further discussion and uh, please follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much.